Hey guys, I just thought I would make this video because there's a whole bunch of you who are probably making content or starting to make content right now. And I just figured that I would show you this really sick thing that I recently discovered that's going to make uh, churning out content and churning out stuff to share your like writing and production knowledge so much easier. Um, so it's really, really sick. So there's a couple of things that you're going to need to be able to do this. Uh, first, you're going to need OBS. Uh, secondly, you're going to need either a webcam or you're going to need to have like a Elgato cam link or something like that uh, and a camera. I'm using a Sony A6000 normally, but right now I'm actually just using a Logitech Brio. The camera doesn't have to be super sick. It's better if it's obviously like not a webcam, but in this case, I am just using a webcam and it seems fine. Uh, third thing you're going to need is you're going to need to have some kind of microphone that you can use for your voiceover. Depending on how I feel, I'm using a Blue Yeti or I'm using an SM7B. The microphone does not have to be super special. This Blue Yeti was super cheap uh, and it's pretty easy to use. And you guys all know how to mix stuff. So, you know, obviously you can make your voice sound pretty damn radio nice uh, without having to stress too hard about the quality of the microphone. Uh, other than that, I've got a very substandard Samsung 21 inch screen, nothing special. I don't know you guys have probably got a way better screen than I do. And other than that, uh, all you need to do is just make sure that you have a couple of decent, half decent lights. I've actually got two lights. I've got one right here, which is a newer light. That's N double E W E R, uh, which has a, um, I don't know the technical term for it, but the thing that put you put on it to help the light sort of have a nice matte finish on your face, as opposed to just being like super harsh. It's not very bright. Uh, this light here is the same. It's actually not on currently. Um, you don't have to have a fancy light, even if you just get a half decent, um, ring light, which you could put in front of you or just, uh, you know, essentially just don't, don't stress too hard. Just make sure you have a key light on this side. Uh, other than that, uh, I've got some smart lighting, which is over here, which I just picked up from the local hardware store. And I've got that set up to my phone. So this basically just means that if I want to adjust the lighting, I can, let's see if you can see it there. Yeah, it's pretty bright. All right, so you can kind of see those buttons there. So if I just press this button here, the lighting goes off. And then you see now my face looks real pale. I'll put the lighting back on again. Looks a bit nicer. Now it's seven o'clock in the morning here. So uh, obviously we've got a little bit of light coming out the window there. I've got that open because it's warm because I'm in Australia. Uh, but normally, uh, you know, once I have air conditioning in the room, it'll be a little bit nicer and I can have that closed and then I control the lighting completely. Also, I've got a salt lamp, which is there. Yeah, there. Um, you don't need a salt lamp. I like it because the orange is kind of cool. Uh, you can play around with all different colors as well. Yeah, so that <clears throat> it's not really that expensive to set yourself up with this kind of stuff. So. Here's the game changer is essentially what you want to be able to do is you want to be recording your audio for your voiceover and your audio for your DAW at the same time. Now I'm using Cubase, uh, as you can see from my screen here, uh, I have this actually set up here on the left hand side because my webcam is right there. And this is a little sneaky trick that I found works kind of well. If you have, uh, that didn't work. If you have this, set closer to your webcam. It makes it easier for you to sort of be looking at the camera, especially if you've got your screen running at the same time. Obviously it doesn't work perfectly. It'd be better, um, you know, if the screen was like that big or something like that, if I had a screen above it, but this kind of does okay. So this is what we're looking at on the inside of OBS. And the main, main things to see are, yeah, we've got here, I'm running through the Blue Yeti. And also we're running here through this thing called loopback. And what this is, is if you don't have a new interface that has inbuilt loopback in it, you have to make your own. Uh, so what I've got is I've got my RME 
and my RME is running out of its line out or output section, and then it's running back in to a Behringer four channel headphone amp on one of the inputs. Uh, and then from the output of the Behringer four channel headphone amp, I'm actually running a, so TRS out to TS, to dual TS. So essentially it's a stereo balanced cable out to two unbalanced line level cables in. And I'm going on the input uh, five and six on my interface. And essentially I have that set up here. We go, oh no, that's the tracks. Here, inputs five and six. So essentially what that means is I'm able to now get recorded signal coming through from Cubase because when you open up a recording piece of, so piece of recording software, the piece of recording software likes to go, I'm taking control of the computer. And when it does, essentially it means that OBS is like, help, help, I'm little OBS, I have no control over things and it doesn't get any audio and it sucks. So where you can see now, if I do this, uh, let's just find a spot. The doctor said, hey boy, this Weird spot for my course, but that's all right. It's a bit nicer. Yeah. So as you can see, we go again. Uh, it's, can you go further back? Yep. And then you can see that that audio was coming through on the loop back there. I'll keep playing that and we can see at the same time. Gosh, be quiet, Josh. Anyway, uh, so that audio is coming through there, but I'm coming through here. So that's game changer number one. Uh, the second thing is what you want to do is you want to set them up on different channels. So if we go to properties here, no, not properties. We go to advanced audio properties. We'll see that I have the blue Yeti set to track one and I have the blue Yeti set to mono and I've got it down minus 2.5, which essentially means it never clips. Because, as you can see, whew, I got there to that loud part there. Because it's not a very forgiving microphone and you do not want to be clipping inside OBS because unlike your DAW, it just, it's not nice. It's not nice to you. So we've got it as a mono signal because it is mono and we've got it on track one. Loopback is not a mono signal. This is down as negative 0.5 because I just don't want it to clip. And that's on track two. And then this is if I ever use my SM7B mono, and that's on track three. What that means is it's recording as three tracks. So essentially, if you go, hey, I'm going to throw this in DAW, it's going to come in and it's actually going to look exactly like, funnily enough, this, because this is what I'm doing right now. I'm actually editing audio. Uh, and you can see I've thrown the video in here. In Cubase, it's really sick. You can open up a video track and you can actually press this button here to reveal the video. Uh, which is essentially revealing the screen cap. Uh, and then we have this, which is the screen cap audio right here. And this is my voiceover. This is my Blue Yeti. And then I've got a bit of mixing going on here. Ton of mixing on my voiceover, honestly, because I want it to sound nice. Uh, and a bit of mixing here and leveling going on with the screen cap. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm actually cutting out the audio as I go. Uh, and this is, you know, if you want to make certain things a bit more technical, etc. But if you wanted to smash out some content, you can essentially do one more step and then you're ready to go to create something that you can edit super quickly. So you want to go to file and settings, and then you want to go to, uh, where we go, video. And because I can't change it because it's currently running. And here's the big winner. Change your canvas to 3840 by 1080. Uh, and your output 3840 by 1080. And then you can see here, essentially I have two screens. This is my webcam and this is my screen. And they're in full, like high, full quality. You know, this is obviously running 1080 HD and this is the same as my screen. What that means now is you can chuck it into your, uh, you can chuck it into your film editing software uh, I use Premiere right now. I'm going to change to DaVinci down the line, but for now I'm using Premiere and essentially you just duplicate it, crop here and crop here, and then voila, you're ready to go and you can just smash that all out. So yeah, essentially that's the go.
Uh, I hope you guys find this useful. Sick.